Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this year's co-host on Pullman stage, Paul Papadimitriou. Hello, everyone. Well, so you can see I kind of look like Loic, but I'm not exactly Loic. So the point is, you know, he's at the other stage right now, so they wanted to find a stunt double. So I have the same height, roughly. I don't have any hair as well. I don't have the blue eyes, but you cannot see it because you're way too far. Anyway, did you have a good lunch? Ah, yeah, the Ashi Parmentier was actually really good. So I'm Greek, I'm Finn, and I'm Swiss. But today I'm going to be a little bit Swiss because I'm going to make sure we're always on time for these afternoons and sessions. Uh, we, have been, we have seen people from different places around the world already. We had questions for people from Korea. We had all these different people. As I just told you, have many nationalities myself. We are going to go to Moscow now with a company called Yandex. You might have heard about it. And I want to welcome on stage, and I'm going to look at my notes not to uh, misquote our name, Jane Zgalavalishina. Please, Jane. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Hi. How are you? Hi, Paul. Thank you very much. The stage is yours. See? Is it okay. a big conference or not? You were telling well, we'll me before. See. Looks big, we'll right? See. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's our work to make people to come here from lunch, right? <laughs> Good luck. Okay. So, yes, I'm Jane, and I'm with a company called Yandex, which you may have heard about because it's one of the biggest internet companies in Europe. But, okay, let's start from the very start. Yeah, here we are. So, long ago, in 1993, it's really long in terms of internet, right? Uh, Yandex's future co-founders were creating their first search and innocent technology. And you know the problem they had? Well, it was nowhere to use it. I mean, just imagine that. You have search and innocent technology, but there is no internet. World Wide Web was just born, right? So, we didn't have the internet as we know it today. And they come up with the idea and the first product, first implementation of Yandex search technology looked like this. I'm not sure if you even remember what it is, right? Because it's called floppy disks. So the first version of Yandex search was on the floppy disk. It was digitalized Bible with search on it. Well, fortunately, actually, they were lucky. Uh, I mean, Yandex co-founders. And very soon, internet evolved. Right? And the amount of information there, it, <coughs> sorry, it grew enormously. And in fact, the internet becomes some kind of a sanctuary for all those guys, mathematicians, engineers, all the guys interested in making information work for people. So they were all there, uh, and they were developing their technologies. But over years, search engine problems changed. And it wasn't just about finding some information anymore. It was about users. It was about understanding them. What do they really want? What are they really asking about? And what they will ask next, right? So it was even more exciting problem than just uh, indexing and search through the information. Uh, but over time, while they were developing all these solutions, working on that, the offline world, how they snobbishly called it, wasn't so offline anymore, right? More and more industries were actually uh, growing in the amount of data they have. And uh, it was even probably more than internet now. And it just turned out that in these industries, for them, for those guys, mathematicians and engineers, there are problems that, that are not less and maybe even more exciting than the problems they solve for the internet. Well, <laughs> we have a lot of such guys uh, in Yandex. It's actually like more than half of the company. And personally, I believe uh, that's exactly, I mean, they just couldn't stand the temptation, right? To give a try their shiny, high-tech internet tools in other tasks, in different industries, in another you know, part of lives. And this is how the idea of Yandex Data Factory was born. It all started between scientists. Talking about science, what can be more exciting than CERN, right? Large Hadron Collider. Uh, the biggest physics experiments ever. And uh, in the Large Hadron Collider, they have these collisions, as you probably know, particle collide 40 million times per second. It's an enormous amount of data. 
even after some preliminary filtering, and you know, if you multiply it to a couple of years, it's huge pile of data. But the problem is that for their experiments, what physicists need, they need to look for some very rare events, only some of them, very rare of them, which can prove or disprove their theory. But how do you find them, right? You can just look through this enormous pile of data. What do you do? You actually need the tool which would be able to find exactly what you need, which is usually your event is kind of, you know, complex pattern of interrelated parameters. So what we started with, uh, one of the experiments in CERN called LHCB uh, started using Yandex's algorithm called MatrixNet for this particular task. MatrixNet is the core machine learning technology of Yandex. It's exactly what is responsible for relevance of our search. It's ranking our search results. And suddenly, it just turned out, if we use this same instrument for this scientific task, it works so well, it significantly improves their scientific output because it's much more precise than all the instruments they've used before. And it's even like around 10% more precise than the other machine learning instruments. And it's very important for them because preciseness of this instrument, I mean, because even 1% very often means the difference between huge scientific discovery of this century and just nothing. So we, we just seen that, okay, we can use our technologies outside of the internet and see some value in it. Why don't we bring it to the real life industries and real life businesses? And so we did. And we came to the Rizal Bank one of the biggest retail banks in Europe. And in this bank, they have a group of marketing analysts, the guys whose job is to make existing customer base buy more bank products or pay more for them. Upsell, cross-sell process, right? So each month, these guys, they decide which offer they will send to which customer, right? They sit in this bank here for years, they analyze their customer base, they use advanced analytic tools, and they know that, well, for example, you need to send your saving deposits offer to women 55 and older, or you need to send consumer loan to young office workers in the cities, and premium banking for senior managers, and so on. And here we come, having no idea about banking business, only armed with our mathematics, and the idea that we could probably improve their results. Well, sounds kind of crazy, but... What we meant is that, in fact, when you do this, you don't want to send your offer to managers or you know, older women. What you really want to do, you want to send your offer to someone who will agree on it, to someone who will actually buy your product. And by an amazing coincidence, it's exactly what our algorithms do, meaning the same algorithms that we use for ads targeting, for example. So fortunately for us, these bankers, they were brave and also probably very curious, so they agreed to the experiment, right? And we took a slice of their customer base, and we said that, well, we do just the same, but the difference is, for this slice of customer base, we will say which, use, which customer will receive which offer, based on the same data they have, but analyzed by our instruments. And guess what? It worked around 13% better. That was quite an inspiring experiment, so we continued further. And our next example was with a road management company. Uh, first of all, Yandex, one of the best products of Yandex is Yandex Maps. Um, it has all the information about you know, real traffic, traffic situation and uh, traffic jams and the car accidents and so on. And it also knows how to build the optimal route for you uh, considering not just the current information we have, but also the prediction about how this road situation will develop in the future, so we could really build the optimal road. So, we approached this road management company. And, well, what they do, they take care of some part of the road network, and their job is to make sure that this part of road network works most efficiently. You know, uh, they clean the roads, they evacuate cars from the accident sites to avoid traffic congestions, and so on. And they work in a huge country with thousands of kilometers of roads, 
with notorious traffic conditions. And before we came, uh, their only hope was an experienced operator in the local situation room. Because what you really need to be efficient in this kind of job, you need to predict the problem before it really happened to be able to dispatch your resources, your vehicles and equipment ahead. So they do have those guys sometimes in some places, right? The operators who work for like 15 years for this particular segment of roads and who know, kind of know what to expect. Like, for example, they think, OK, uh, tomorrow is Friday, and we know that on Friday morning we have huge trucks traffic to this direction, to Moscow, and we have this segment of road which goes uphill. So probably, if it's minus temperature tomorrow, we may have ice there, and cars will stuck, and we will have huge traffic congestion. So it's better if we send our vehicles and equipment there right now, beforehand, to prevent the problem. And they have guys like that. But the problem is they're not scalable, right? You can't have them everywhere, first of all. And also, even the best of them, they still cannot you know, process all the information around. So what we did, well, again, we took a slice of their work, just a small part of their road network, 2,000 kilometers. And for those 2,000 kilometers, using our algorithms, we analyzed all the data they have. And what we can do now, we provide them with real-time prediction for the next one hour where they should expect problems. <laughs> and of course, it makes their work hugely more efficient, up to 30 times, actually, more efficient than they can do it now. Well, one more example <laughs> from a totally different industry. Imagine that well, you see a company which manages big, linear objects of infrastructure, like power lines or uh, gas pipeline. The problem is, of course, you have some you know, monitoring system in place which tells you when you have some problem with your equipment, right? But what you really want to have is you want to know about these problems before they really happen. Like, for example, if there is some tree which is damaged and it's about to fall to the wires and harm them, you would like about that beforehand, right? But the only way to do that is to have the real field inspection, like physically go all these thousands of kilometers along uh, overhead power lines and check if everything's all right. It's crazy expensive. Or, for example, if you have a buffer zone around your gas pipelines and you see some car in this zone, you would, again, like to know about it. But how do you secure this kind of perimeter? It's, again, crazy expensive. But fortunately, there is a more elegant solution for that now. That's a pilot project we did for an um, electricity grid company in Russia, together with uh, Accenture. In fact, Accenture had two partners on it. One is a company that manufactures drones, and another is Yandex. So what happens? Drones fly along the power lines, take the pictures of the infrastructure, then all the pictures are stored into our cloud and processed there, where we recognize different types of objects. And now we can provide the information about it to the company that manages this infrastructure. Now they know about that, that tree that's about to fall. They can send somebody to cut it before it harms the wires, right? Or they know that some intruders were in the buffer zone and they can go and check if everything's all right. And the beauty of it, it's cheap, it's fa fast working, and it's very scalable. So if tomorrow we need to monitor not thousands, but millions of kilometers, no problem. We can easily do that. So what all this was about? Actually, what we've seen and what we announced today is uh, our intention to bring our capabilities to the enterprise market, because what we've seen, we really can bring this new value into the businesses. Uh, <laughs> that's, just a that's probably a, well, that's kind of funny story. You, I'm sure you've heard it a lot of times. There is this geeky approach to things when they say, oh, finally, now we have this technology, so we can finally change the world to the better. Right? <laughs> well, it sounds kind of naive, but it's almost exactly what I th thought when I've seen the results of those experiments. Because with this kind of thing in our hands, 
Well, we believe we can change world to the better. So is Yandex is one of the biggest internet companies in Europe, and it's also one of top five search engines in the world. We are often asked about the future. What is it next? What is it after the search? What do you see there? What, what are you doing for that? Well, between search companies, there is no one universal answer to this question, right? Everybody looks for it. So well, some companies you know, introduce driverless cars, and other ones are creating futuristic chopsticks. And we in Yandex, actually, we love our technologies, and we believe in them, and we want to develop them furthermore, and we want to apply them wherever they are applicable. So this new initiative we are announcing today, Yandex Data Factory, aims to do just that. What we want to do, we want to bring our technological capabilities to another industries of the world around us. Because we've already seen that there is a value in it, and it really can change worlds to the better. And what we aim for is to improve all those industries based on the analysis of data they have with Yandex technologies. And this is what Yandex Factory is about. And please wish us luck. Thank you.